I'm Antonio Centeno. I'm the founder of Real Men Real Style and a tailored suit. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the men's suit, the jacket in detail. In fact, I'm gonna link you over to an article at a tailored suit in which I go into the 10 different details I'm gonna be talking about here in this quick video. But before I get started, guys, really quick, I wanna let you know I'm not gonna focus in on suit colors, jacket colors. I'm not gonna talk about that in this video. In addition, I'm not gonna be talking about the full suit. So I'm not gonna cover trousers, not gonna cover shoes, not gonna cover shirts. Instead, I'm gonna talk about 10 particular style details when it pertains to the jacket. So very detailed that, let me go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so point number one, when you're looking at jackets, when you're out there making a decision of what type of suit jacket you're going to go with, you're either gonna to have to go with single or double-breasted suits. So that's the first thing. When Now, to be honest, most of the stores out there aren't gonna have double-breasted jackets, but if you are in a store that has double-breasted jackets, that's a good thing, usually a sign of quality, a little bit more old school, probably a store like Brooks Brothers or something like that, but double-breasted jackets are very rare nowadays. It was a kind of, you know, and you may be asking, why are they out of style? Really, it did have to do with the trends, but it also has to do with actually the wars. And when I'm talking World War II in particular, the shortage of clothing, actually they had rationing, and all of a sudden double-breasted jackets, which used more fabric, basically were made less. Also, when the vets were coming back, most of them in their military uniforms had been single-breasted. They got used to it. All of a sudden, we saw the double-breasted jacket just fall out of favor. Now, point number two and what we're gonna talk about, single-breasted jackets. You're gonna see two and three-button jackets are going to be the most common. Now, right here, I'm wearing a three-button jacket. I have a lot of jackets, uh, especially sports jackets, which are two-button jackets, and you will occasionally see one-button jackets. Those are gonna be informal wear, mostly, and you will also see four-button, five-button, and in some cases, no-button jackets. Those last ones, don't wear them, they're an abomination. Um, yeah, yeah, don't have them custom made either. Now, some basketball players will say, you know, yeah, I understand if you're seven feet tall, maybe then consider a four button jacket, it'll look a little bit more proportioned. But if you're not beyond probably six foot six, really, uh, yeah, let's not even go there. Okay, so what's gonna be the decision then? mostly between two and three button jackets. I'm gonna recommend for most men to start with a two button. The second jacket, sure, a three button. Now understand there is a little bit of play between the two, there's also a two and a half, and this is where you actually, it's designed not to button that top button. Now the rules are the center button on a three button is always um, the top button on a three button sometimes, um, and the bottom button never on both jackets, while the top button on the two button is always. But as you can see right here, I've got two buttons buttoned. This is gonna be a little bit more formal look, and that's where the three button shines. It's a little bit more formal, a little bit more covered up of a look, and actually you can base, there's actually been scientific studies that have shown the more of our body that we cover, that actually more formal and more intelligent we look. So, you know, if you're giving a lot of presentations, maybe a three button is the way you would want to go. It's a little bit more old school, and sometimes it falls in and out of favor. I like two buttons, though, for most of my jackets, and the reason being they're a little bit more, I would say a little bit more casual, and I would mostly wear sports jackets, but for suit jackets, you know, a two button is perfectly fine, especially if it's going with a suit that is solid, dark in color, uh, but if you're gonna start bringing in pinstripes, uh, other types of patterns, then you may want to uh, also consider a three. Now, so we've talked about single versus double, one, three versus two, let's talk about the lapels now. So this is point number three. Notch lapels are going to be by far the most common. If you wanna change it up a bit, make the jacket a little bit more formal, then you can go with peak lapels. Peak lapels, are always going to be on a double-breasted jacket. So if you ever see a double-breasted jacket with notch lapels, then run, that is, that is not a good look. Now, there is a third type of lapel uh, that we can talk about, and that's going to be the shawl lapel. The shawl lapel is mostly going to be in black tie. Occasionally you will see it also on a double-breasted jacket, but that's one of the more formal, and I would say it's pretty rare, so if you're looking at shawl lapels, you probably know a little, you know, yeah, you're probably already more advanced than what this video is gonna cover. So, 
Point number four to look at in a suit jacket is going to be the shoulder style. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're going to have very soft shoulders and the soft shoulders are going to be more of uh, what's, you know, more the Italian look and that's considered also a little bit less formal versus more structured shoulders which are going to be more of the English look and they're going to be built up a bit more. You will also see some Italian structured shoulders and they're going to have a little bit of roping on that, a little bit of a bump here on the end and those are going to be considered more formal. Now, I rarely ever see, if you get all the other details, just make sure that whenever you buy a suit, it actually fits you in the shoulders. Uh, if it looks a little bit too structured, then possibly ask the salesman for a less structured, softer shoulder and he'll probably be impressed. Okay, so point number five, let's talk about the silhouette of the suit. We're either going to have the sack, we're going to have the fitted or the Italian as some people call it and we're going to have the structured which is going to be more of the English look. So with the sack, that's where it hangs down. It's not going to be very tight around the midsection. Known as also as the American Brooks Brothers style. This has been around for about a hundred years. Very classic but in my opinion not always going to be well, you know, well suited to a man who takes care of his body. Now the fitted is going to see, be more of a European look. It's going to fit the body exactly like it just says. However, it does need to be tailored and adjusted. We're going to see this in a lot of designer suits but if you carry a bit of weight around the midsection, you don't necessarily want to go with a fitted suit although you can go with something that maybe is a little bit more adjusted. Um, I've seen some guys pull it off but they don't have too big of a midsection. Now the structured jacket the English one. This is where we're going to see the actual chest and the shoulders built up. You're going to have more of a silhouette. You will have some waist suppression but uh, this is going to be something that has a very, it's going to be the most formal of all of the looks we just talked about. Okay, so point number six, let's talk about pockets. So you're going to see different types of pockets out there. The most common you will have a single breast pocket on the left hand side. In some of my videos you may see I have a breast pocket on the right hand side and you can leave a comment down below of why you think I do that but well, I'll just tell you guys. Basically it is because I enjoy uh, doing things and challenging the status quo and having fun with some of my clothing uh, but you will also see pockets down here on the, uh, on the hip area of the jacket. These pockets mostly will be straight across. You will occasionally see slanted or what's known as hacking pockets. Those are more sport. You'll see them also on the other, you know, the English are a big fan of them. Another thing you'll see out there are patch pockets. Patch pockets are very informal and are going to be more reserved for sports jackets and sometimes a blazer. Uh, let's talk now about sleeve buttons. Most jackets are going to have about four. Some will have three, some will have five and some will have other variations but the number is I would say four is going to be standard on a suit. Uh, three is perfectly fine on a suit. Below three all of a sudden we start getting into custom sports jackets and things I see there. Five has become a little bit more fashionable and some people talk about the buttons actually kissing where there, or there, there's a bit of overlap. When it comes down to it, this is a very small detail. Just make sure that you've got about four buttons. If you start to see like you know weird button contrasting or just a strange overlap or some contrast stitching, then you may want to question you know is this more of a designer suit. Um, now let's talk about the inside lining. So this is point number eight. Most jackets on the inside lining, they're going to go, they're going to go with a very simple inside lining that actually somewhat matches the outer exterior, doesn't really get out there. Uh, custom jackets, a lot of times you'll see someone go with something that's a bit more loud, something that's a bit more unique. Most of the time they're going to be made from Bemberg. If you see that the inside of the jacket is made from a unnatural material and I'm talking like something that like rayon or something that doesn't breathe as well, be very careful that can affect the breathability. Uh, Bemberg is actually made from wood pulp and is very breathable. You'll also see some silk out there. Silk I like to stay away from because it's more expensive and if it tears, very, very difficult to fix. Now let's talk about point number nine which are jacket vents. So this goes back to when we were talking about the various silhouettes but sack, when, sack fitted versus structured. Usually on vents, if you have no vents that's going to be more of the Italian look. It allows for a more fitted look. Single vents in the back. These are often accompanied with most mass manufactured jackets because they're the least expensive to build. I'm not a fan of them because if you put your hands in your pocket, basically the back opens up and it exposes your backside. 
My favorite is the double vent or the two-sided vent and the reason being you can put your hand in your pocket whenever you walk it gives you just the, I think it creates the nicest look and is the best of both worlds. It's also the most expensive to manufacture which is why we rarely see it in off the rack clothing. Finally, let's talk about the lapel button. So if you look on a jacket there should be a little button hole right in here and that's because these jackets were originally designed to be able to close up and button. Nowadays this is used to put in a boutonniere and there should be a small little latch right behind it to hold a flower. All right guys, let me know what you think. That is the men's suit, the jacket in detail. Hopefully you learned something in the video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.